Well, howdy. I'm Jay. Welcome to my booth. Headphones, they're a big part of your kit, so which one is the best for voiceover artists, and why do we even use them in the first place? So, uh, we use headphones to monitor ourselves, our performance, and our environment. Monitoring our performance, pretty self-explanatory, is, is what I'm doing, being heard the way that I think it should be heard. Uh, in addition to that, when we're out in the real world talking to another person, our voice goes out and reflects off of things, whether that's the walls, the furniture, even the person you're talking to, and it comes back to us. And when we hear those reflections, our body immediately starts to understand intuitively if we're being loud enough, if we're communicating well, and even if we're being understood properly. In a voiceover booth, those reflections, which are vital for us to essentially monitor ourselves in the real world, those are gone in a voiceover booth because these walls are designed to eliminate all of those reflections, which give us so much information on a normal basis. So by wearing headphones in the booth, we help to counteract that a little bit. Uh, you could think of it this way. If you weren't wearing headphones, you may start to experience what you experience in, say, a loud bar or a restaurant or concert. Your voice gets incrementally louder as you try and be heard over all of the din, and uh, you end up projecting more than maybe you need to. In voiceover, I want to be sure that I'm talking just at the right level to talk to you right where you are instead of uh, something else and headphones help you to do that and understand that and then in terms of monitoring your environment it, you just want to be li able to listen out for say a dog barking a plane going overhead lawnmower starting up anything that might uh, bumping your microphone a plosive hitting your capsule all those things you want to keep an ear out for and so those are the reasons why we wear headphones uh, now, which headphones are best for voiceover artists? Uh, well, most of the time you'll see us wearing something like this. These are closed back headphones. What does closed back mean? The back is closed, meaning no sound is coming in or coming out of the headphones, or at least it's isolated as it can be. Now, why is that important? You don't want sound bleeding out and getting into your microphone and ruining your recordings uh, or disrupting your recordings. That's especially true if you're recording over, say, music or a TV show or you're dubbing into something. You don't want that sound bleeding out. And then on the flip side, it gives you a cleaner monitoring experience because the environment isn't coming in and mingling with the sound coming just from your microphone. It blocks all that out. So for both of those reasons, closed back headphones are the way to go. Now, within closed back headphones, which ones are the best? This entirely comes down to your own budget and your own personal tastes, both in the way they feel on your head and the way that they sound. Different headphones will not only have different tunings in terms of the way that they project sound into your ears, but they'll also have different designs. They'll have different clamping uh, pressures. They'll feel different on top of your head. They'll have different padding, both in terms of the padding itself and the shape of this. All of those things play into how they feel. And none of them are either good or bad or better or worse. Some are ranked higher on some lists, but really I think it just comes down to your own personal taste. I would say look to spend between 50 bucks to 150 bucks on a good pair of headphones. $150 headphones like the ones I'm wearing here are they'll last you your whole career more or less. $50 headphones equally so. I have headphones that I still use to this day. Now within that range, just make sure that you hang on to your receipt, you check the return policy, and try them out for a while. If they don't feel good on your head after you've given a few days to settle and get a little bit used to them, send them back. 
This is not a place where you want to cut corners, in my opinion. They're in contact with your body for hours a day. If they are causing you discomfort, if they're nagging at you, at you in any way, it's not worth cutting the corner. Try and find the ones that work, which is why I think it's really important to make sure that you can exchange them or return them. Now, other things that will come into play, some headphones have impedance ratings or ohm ratings that you'll see just here. 250 ohms, that's the same as the ones that I'm currently wearing. What does that mean? More or less, the higher the ohm rating or the higher impedance rating, the more volume you're going to have to crank into those headphones to get a good listenable level in those uh, headphones. The lower the ohms, the less volume or power you got to drive through those headphones to get a listenable amount. Now, practically speaking, what that really boils down to is high impedance headphones, 150, 250 ohms. Those will not work well with, say, a laptop or a cell phone or plugging them into an Xbox controller or a uh, Nintendo Switch, things like that, because all of those devices don't have the headphone power output to drive them enough. Um, you still will be able to hear, but you're going to have to drive that volume to max and it's still going to be pretty quiet. Whereas lower ohm headphones, lower impedance headphones, say 40 to 80, you can easily plug those into uh, a laptop or a switch or something like that and get a good listening level. So then the question is, why do they even have high impedance headphones like this? Why not just have them all used across all different devices? Well, the reason is, if you're high level in audio, I'm not saying that I am, I was just curious about it, so I wanted to try higher impedance headphones. But those who have really, really sensitive ears and are mixing things like music, orchestra, orchestral things, post-production on movies where they have to listen to extremely fine details in those recordings, higher impedance headphones, the higher ohm values that they need, those offer a little bit more detail than the lower ones. Do you need those in voiceover? No, I don't think so. Can you use them? Sure, I do, and they're great. And then just a couple other things to consider. Say you just bought a fantastic new pair of AirPod Maxes or uh, Sony awesome headphones that have like bass boost and noise cancellation and Bluetooth capabilities. Can you use those? Uh, sure, yeah, you can. Uh, the only thing to note is Never, ever, ever use Bluetooth headphones. That's because they introduce latency into the equation, which you cannot work with. It's not worth it. Um, and those headphones, the Apple headphones, the Sony headphones, the uh, Bose headphones, those are all generally designed for consumers, listeners, rather than audio producers. The difference there being mainly the environment that you're meant to be listening in and the sort of critical listening experience that the person using the headphones is looking for. Headphones like the ones I'm wearing and these are designed to be neutral and impart really, really fine detail. They're not going to gussy up the sound. They're not going to make it sound really bassy and meaty and like they're, they're not going to do that to whatever I'm listening to, which is really important for us because we want it. We want to know what we're listening to is what we're actually listening to instead of the headphones changing that signal. And again, that's neither good nor bad. They're just different use cases. So again, can you use those Sony Bose AirPod Max if you can plug it into your computer and your audio interface and you don't per turn on any noise cancellation or bass boost or anything like that, by all means, go ahead and use them. Uh, but I would still recommend getting a good pair of closed back recording monitoring headphones 
uh, as your main drivers for in your booth, if you can. So all of that should help get you to a good starting place in looking for a good pair of headphones. If you have any questions about this or anything else, voiceover related or, you know, life related, drop them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, I've got that available over on my website. Feel free to check that out and drop me a line. Until then, I will catch you in the next one and be well. Toodles.